think one of the most glorious things I get to see every day is the sunrise. I get to experience the gradual change from darkness to light. I sit at the computer every day, and I mean every day, looking out through my sliding glass window and I see this porch that just is illuminated slowly by the sunrise as it comes up over the, the mountains that are between California and Nevada. And it's kind of glorious because from Sacramento it's like a flatland all the way to the mountains that should you be able to see on a clear day like when the wind's blowing you could see the mountains on the horizon and as the sun comes over those mountains it's just beautiful the way it casts its glow upon the entire Central Valley and the way that God has designed it so so much so that if you get the chance to look if you get the chance to see and to observe you can understand why God is light because everything responds to that light that morning sun is so bright especially in the summer so hot and so warm that it causes life to spring forth in this central valley that I currently live in and I watch and see how all the plants respond to it at first they all turn to the light and sometimes there's too much light but because I have this barrier that's grown up from that light that's just got huge bushes that have grown up almost like in Alaska where we when we live out in the bush bushes grow so fast and so quickly that they become as tall as trees and that's why it's called the bush because there are no trees but when you go out there it looks like it in the summer sometimes because they're so tall and so big and so lush and that's why they call it the bush because the bushes grow up as trees they're tall and huge and grow phenomenally but then I wake up in the morning and you know it's dark and I'm kind of doing my devotionals and posting those things that God has told me to do for the people that are up early and getting ready for work then I'm always amazed because I just want to stop what I'm doing whenever I see the sunrise. I want to quit while I'm able to enjoy and employ the beauty of the stillness of God in a sunrise. Have you ever noticed that there's a stillness and a quiet, a calm before the storm of your day, a peace that passes, really, creation's understanding? a peace that comes upon the world just before it's anxious to go on and do everything that it needs to do. Sometimes I think we miss it because of our technology making us run to do the things we think we ought to do. When I was working on a farm, it was a lot different then. Because when you were farming, you'd get up before sunrise and you'd be out working on the farm, but when that, when that sun came over the horizon, if you were on a tractor, you had to stop. You just had to stop for a minute and kind of look at that sunrise and be amazed at just how bright and how beautiful it really was. Whether you were in the fields or your fields had hills around or whether you were on the flats, you know, and you had long rows. You had to take out your sunglasses too, but just for a moment, I think people in agrarian societies that deal with farmland or deal with sheep or cattle or deal with more closer to creation have a better understanding of God and how he deals with his creation than many people in technology who say they don't even know if there is a creator much less God himself if you stopped your day today and took a look at a sunrise and if you started to ask God to speak to you each and every day I think you begin to discover that not only is there a creator, but all of creation is trying and groaning and even making noise to cause you to understand, get your life together, please, for our sake. Because as long as the sons of God have not been revealed, which is what we are as warning and Christians, then all of creation groans in travail waiting for the revelation of the sons of God. Because the time is at hand soon Jesus will come again soon the curse will be lifted off of the world and then we'll see what God intended for it to be in the kingdom of our son that Jesus will 
established as the King of Kings and Lord of Lords to the glory of God his Father because he is the Son of Man the Son of God but he is coming again not just to rescue those before the Great Tribulation but to set up his kingdom so that there would be a kingdom likened unto our God that we would enjoy in a thousand years of peace much like the Garden of Eden as it was in the beginning and as it was in the beginning so too it will be in the end of all things when God makes a new heaven and a new earth the accuser of the brethren is cast down which accused them before our God day and night they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect who shall lay anything to the charge of you who shall lay anything to my charge who would accuse me and who would accuse you for if anyone accuse you with unjust cause they are an accuser of the brethren and they act as Satan's ambassador but if they reconcile with you if they choose to observe that you should think about these things or if you choose to or pray about or consider as Jesus did when he spoke to those that were listening he always said if any man come after me he never said come after me he didn't command people to do things because they would have done it as God they would have automatically obeyed but the opportunity of choice is always ours so when someone commands you to repent or tells you forcefully things to do that obviously they're accusing you of something they're an accuser of the brethren they're simply an ambassador of Satan without ever knowing even Jesus had to warn Peter at one point in time get thee behind me Satan for you know not what you speak of and a lot of times Christians get excited and want to advocate this position of prophecy to a point where they think they're a prophet and in reality God hasn't told them to speak so be careful in what you do when you lay any charge against God's elect for if God has chosen them you're not the one to reconcile or to cause a person to be in any way shape or form stumbled or removed from being in God's sight as his elect chosen and sanctified by himself and not you it is God that justifies and who is he that condemneth surely not the brethren it is Christ that died yea rather that is risen again who is even at the right hand of God who also makes intercession for us having spoiled the principalities and powers he made a show of them openly that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death that is the devil and deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil and take the sword of the spirit which is the word of God thanks be to God which gives us the victory through Jesus Christ our Lord and this is the victory that we trust him with all our heart meaning not to our own understanding but in all our ways acknowledging him and letting him <laughs> direct our path you see the sun's here the light has come there's no reason for anyone to walk in darkness today if you hear his voice harden not your heart as it says in the provocation but there is absolutely no reason you can't there is absolutely no scriptural basis for you not to hear his voice all of creation hears his voice all of God's anointed and appointed and chosen to be walking with him in fellowship with the Father and with the Son hear his voice today the question you ask yourself am I hearing his voice because if you're not you got your fingers in your ears you need to examine yourself and find why you alone aren't hearing God's voice people try to challenge Vidivo by saying oh you're a wacko because you hear voices no I don't hear voices I hear voice I hear Jesus speaking to me I don't hear voices I know God 
I know that God speaks to me. I know that God himself, the Son of God, the Son of Man, Jesus himself promised to his disciples that they would hear his voice and they would follow not the voice of another. For he knows his own and he will call them by name. When you know Jesus, you should pursue on to hear his voice. When you know God, you should pursue on to hear him calling you by name. Because God never said that he was going to leave you in the dark as though it were some kind of mystical experience where you have to exercise your faith in some work it up and make it feel good and get involved with millions of people around you in order to hear God speak. As a matter of fact, I know a little child who slept inside the tabernacle whom God spoke to and said and called him by name and he woke up and he said, looked around and nobody was there. So he went and woke the high priest, Eli. And Eli said, don't bug me. Sent him back. And again, the boy spoke to him after he fell asleep and he woke up and he said, ah, what's going on? And so he went back to Eli and he shook him and woke him up. He says, what do you want? And Eli says, I didn't call you. But if the voice calls again, say, here am I. Speak, Lord, thy servant listens. So the boy went back laying asleep and as soon as he heard the voice again he woke up and he said here am I speak Lord thy servant listens and God Almighty the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ spoke to Samuel and he became a great prophet of God you are not necessarily going to be a prophet but you are called to be a son of God and Jesus said I hear my father I see my father I know my Father. My Father and I are one. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. That's your destiny. That's your calling. That's your election. And make it sure. Make it conformable to the place where the Spirit of God brings you to hear His voice today. Because God is speaking to a generation that has hardened their heart. They have removed themselves from the authority of God and His Word and have decided for themselves that they know better by theology than God does by knowing you as his created being, causing them to go off on a tangent that unfortunately leads to the Valley of Megiddo and the Armageddon of destruction. Today, if you hear his voice, Harden not your heart so that you will walk in his ways, that you will talk with the Son, that you will know the Father, and that you will become one with God. The unity of the fellowship of the believers in the body of Christ that's causing us to become the bride isn't about ourselves. It's about himself and knowing him in a personal and intimate way that you've never known him before. So if you've never heard his voice, if you've never heard Jesus speak, you shall receive. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and the door will be opened. But more than that, just ask. Just ask. <laughs> oh, by the way, after you ask, listen. <laughs>